essentially we are stuck in paradise not that i'm complaining not that it's a bad thing but it is true we are pretty much stuck here until we can get the engine situation sorted out the rigging situation fixed and dealt with luckily we have met a lot of awesome people here in mexico and no there's been no lack of actual sailing even though we haven't been able to actually sail this boat very far yet we've been able to make it out to isla cozumel on several occasions it's truly beautiful agua azul beautiful crystal clear clean water with just a little bit of the seaweed making its way into the anchorage unlike on this coast line it's just a short hop and sail across a couple of hours sail across the currenty waters and yes it is truly paradise there isla cozumel when the weather is just right meaning that the entrance to the canal where our boat resides is not impassable by surf caused by southeasterlies or the wind is too light to sail, or the wind is too strong to bash up into with opposing wind and current, we head out with friends towards a paradise called El Cielo, which can mean heaven or sky depending on your interpretation, where there are a couple of decent moorings waiting for us, free for the taking with national park passes. There are a few fish swimming nearby and creatures living in the shallows, specifically one main cloud or school of fish, one lobster, and one tiny nurse shark hiding in a rock. But the tourists come here by the boatload daily, mainly to see the large stars of El Cielo. Here at the southern end of Cozumel Island, there is also an interesting mangrove zone where Robbie has reported to have seen a large croc lazing around, but we have yet to catch the creature on camera with the drone. Fortunately, there isn't much trash left here by all the abundance of tourist boats, but we picked up this free stainless steel boat ladder one day under the mooring, Something that should be mentioned before I continue on showing all these beautiful, nice places underwater is the issue of marine environment health, knowing whether or not the ecosystems that we're filming are healthy. Of course, we and other sailing videos and local tourist operators are selecting the most interesting critters in coral to show you, but without being a total bummer, the reality is rather bleak. I remember my own experience as a tourist dumped into a dive spot for the first time, not here in Mexico, but in Thailand. What I wonder is, 10 years ago was the first time I went to Thailand and I dove in the water with a, with a little snorkel tour. And the reef that I saw off of um, Koh Chang, I didn't know how to use a snorkel and I could hardly breathe and I didn't know what I was doing. It was one of those kind of, you know, I was one of those tourists floating in the water, splashing around and there were like, needlefish, there were big groups of cuttlefish everywhere, there were many different species of kind of these kind of butterfly fish. I didn't have a camera, I didn't have a GoPro or anything 10 years ago, but I got back to my room, my little hut room, and I started drawing in my sketchbook, and I drew all the things that I saw. So that's kind of my evidence of, of what I saw. And I've never seen anything like that ever again. I've never seen anything like that again in Thailand. What I'm trying to get at is like, is there this kind of actual loss of of animals that we could see in real time? Oh yeah, underwater. Or? Definitely. I mean, coral destruction. I mean, is possibly the biggest change I have seen growing up. Mostly that and and cutting of forests for construction. Is it that, or is there a little bit? I had said to you this once that I really missed that dive the first time I dove in the water ever and you said to me, oh, you sound a little bit like a, a, a drug user who's saying that their first hit was their best hit and um, 
from now on you never experience that and you're 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 like chasing the dragon of of uh of the most beautiful coral reef in the world of, yeah of, like i even think that movie chasing coral i think that movie is referencing that concept with the name maybe the first time you see things uh they're more amazing and then it kind of the magic is wearing off but I like I'm just not sure I guess I have an endeavor to be able to explore as many of these environments as possible and it seems to me like we've visited some amazing spots of course but nothing compares to the first time I jumped in the water in Thailand so I'm wondering like is it just in my head are we seeing the degradation of things in real time in person or am I kind of chasing that coral. <laughs> it it kind of seems to me like it's a little bit of a fish ghost town going on at Cozumel. There's like these great neighborhoods where fish could swim around and there could be a lot of critters in the water, but there there's so many dive boats in the area that they've scared away all the fish or or maybe it's some of those fishing boats that are for some reason allowed to be fishing in the week, the reef area that have cleaned out the area. There's no way that that many divers in the water daily doesn't scare off yeah. wildlife. So by trying I to caught the 300 bo boats in one spot one day. So kind of in a way I'm not I'm not advocating that you visit and contribute to that I guess. But uh, for the purposes of movie making here's a glimpse at the beautiful underwater vistas of Cozumel. Robbie's fisherman heart races at the sight of tasty schools of fish like these and the thought of their general abundance. But we fear that it's collapsing all around us. Tell us about your own experience. Comment if you think this bittersweet reality is worth discussing in videos. this before returning home to the construction site. In order to finish installing the electrical system components sent to us by our lovely viewers via our Amazon wishlist, one thing led to another and we started deconstructing the entire ceiling that was making running wires for the LED lights too complicated. Choco, are you a hot dog? Some more items off the Amazon wishlist. LED lights and a cup brush to be able to prep the ceiling for the lights. Thank you, Dana, for helping the work move forward. And prepping the ceiling for a nice coat of white paint led to some prepping of the walls throughout the boat for new paint as well. On all those sunny days, we work outside, sanding and fiberglassing the prow. You'll notice that I now have a mask for working with paint dust and fiberglass dust and painting as well. If you have it on a little bit too tight, I can see in the, my reflection in the screen here. And also we managed to find a small enough little vacuum that it's able to suck up at the same time on the one outlet, hopefully the vacuum running at the same time as the sander is not going to overload that. Slowly but surely, we're getting ourselves together. In between sanding wood, paint, and fiberglass, we head over to a small secret cenote for an exclusive fish pedicure. But the little buggers only seem to find something yummy about Robbie's feet for some reason. These oceanside cracks in the earth filled with a mix of fresh and seawater are home to some fascinating critters, including this sargassum fish, one of the very few critters interested in finding sargassum weed around these parts. We remembered David Attenborough's informative narration about the little fellow when we first spotted it.
Thank you everyone for watching these videos. We only ask that you subscribe if you enjoyed watching, because it'll allow you to easily watch again. And give us a thumbs up for some reason, just because it's a positive thing to do.